Has God forgotten his world? Is God ignoring the evil that we are seeing today? Is God not present in our world today? The evil person seems to think so. But we need to keep asking ourselves, is it true that God has forgotten his world? Is it true that God has chosen to be silent? Where is God? Now notice in the beginning of the passage, the psalmist is actually asking why God seems to be standing far off and why he's not acting. But also the wicked person is boasting because he cannot sense God's presence. He cannot see God acting. He cannot see God taking action. And so there is a similarity. The Christian or the psalmist or the person who worships Yahweh is asking where God is. But also the wicked person is saying this God is not acting. This God is not doing anything. He's also saying God has forgotten. Now it's very easy for us to blame the wicked and spend time looking at the wicked person. But I think there is an opportunity for us here to look at ourselves as Christians, as people who worship God, and ask ourselves, are we spending so much time looking at evil, spending so much time eyeing the wicked things that are going on, that we have forgotten? We can no longer sense where God is. We can no longer sense what God is doing. Because it's one thing to look at all the evil and to say this and that and complain about it and say all this evil is happening. But it's another thing, and I think the psalmist is also trying to portray this. The psalmist is also trying to show that it's one thing that the evil people are doing all this wrong stuff. But it's also another thing to focus and spend so much time watching the evil. Because when you as a Christian, when you as a person who worships Yahweh as God, spend so much time looking at evil, you forget who God is. You forget to focus your eyes on what God is doing. You remove your eyes from God and instead focus on the circumstances around you. Whenever we remove our eyes from God and focus on our circumstances, we forget who God is. And so in verse, um, in verse, sorry, in verse 12, he says, arise. Arise, Lord, lift up your hand. Now, one of the interesting things I've seen the psalmist does, even in his laments, is to make God into like a human being, that God has hands, that God is able to act, that God is able to deliver, that God has feet, that God is able to destroy. And so he says, Lord, lift up your hand, O God, and do not forget the helpless. He's calling upon God. When you remove your eyes from the evil and focus on God, you will call upon God to deal with the evil that is happening. Whenever we are looking at the evil that is around us and we forget who God is, we become like practical atheists. You know a real atheist will say there is no God and so there is no point of believing in that God. But a practical atheist can be a person who actually knows there is God and believes somehow that God exists. But when he looks at his circumstances, when it comes to practical matters, he does not believe and cannot see God acting. And so the challenge for the psalmist in this passage was to see God as God who is able to act as God who is able to help the helpless, to focus his eyes on God and not on his circumstances and not on the evil that is going on around us. I believe that we live in an age where we need to be proactive as Christians, not reactive, 
at the evil that is happening around us. I remember when the movie Fifty Shades of Grey came out some time early this year, and I was reading Facebook posts from my friends, and everybody was reacting, saying how we should challenge, how we should come up with a movie, how we should do things. What do you do in the face of evil? Do you wait for it to happen? And then as a Christian, you start reacting. Why can't we as Christians be the ones who are leading the culture, who are dictating what needs to happen, who are saying this is the way so that others can follow, instead of waiting for the world to develop and to do things, and then we are following them and saying, let's push back against this, let's complain against this. How can we be proactive? I don't think Christianity has become an old religion. I don't think Christianity is old-fashioned. I don't think Christianity has become irrelevant. Most people would like to think so. Most people would like to say that I am no longer Christian, or I'm not even proud today to say that I am a believer of God. I have faith in God. We need 